Ben Rennick was one of the country's preeminent snake breeders. This girl, very tame. Rennick appeared at reptile shows selling his snakes to enthusiasts all over the country. That ended in June of 2017 when he was found dead at his breeding facility. I thought he'd been attacked by a snake um, because his, his skull was crushed. Um, but he was standing exactly where he always stood, right there in the facility. Sam Rennick is Ben's brother. He got the panicked call that night from Ben's wife, Lynn Lee. It wasn't until well after the police arrived and that I was told that he was actually murdered by a by a gun, by a weapon, and I, I didn't. I found that very hard to believe. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Nobody would ever want to hurt Ben. According to police, Ben was the victim of multiple gunshot wounds, with one being a contact wound to the head. Nothing was stolen, and based on where his body was found, investigators seemed to be convinced of one thing, that the killer was known to Rennick. But Ben's murder went unsolved for more than two years, until this January, a break. Identified only as BB in the police report, he broke the case wide open with information leading to the arrest of Ben's wife, Lynn Lee Rennick, and her ex-boyfriend, Michael Humphrey. The two are charged with first-degree murder in the death of Ben Rennick. According to the probable cause affidavit, BB told police he was having an affair with Lynn Lee while she was married to Ben. They continued to see each other after Ben died, even fathering a child with her. According to BB, Lynn Lee told him she feared Ben would divorce her over the money problems with the spa. So, with the help of ex-boyfriend Michael Humphrey, she planned to shoot Ben after a previous poisoning attempt failed to kill him. BB told police that Lynn Lee and Humphrey went to the snake farm. Lynn Lee told Ben that Humphrey was an old friend who wanted to see the snakes. After a tour, they returned to the car to retrieve a gun. BB told police Lynn Lee walked in with the gun and shot Ben multiple times. Lynn Lee and Humphrey then returned to Lynn Lee's spa business where Lynn Lee took off her clothes and took a shower, giving the clothes to Humphrey to dispose of with the gun and shell casings. It was a huge relief. We were happy to finally get some answers. However, of course, they were ugly. You know, hearing that, he, that she attempted to poison him, all of that was new news to us. Finding out that she was having an affair was something we were completely taken, we were shocked. We couldn't have imagined that. That's not the Lindley we knew. Joining me now to dig into this case further from Columbia, Missouri, anchor and managing editor at ABC 17, Lucas Geisler. Lucas, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having me, Julie. You have done such extensive reporting on this case. And so the first question I have for you is really, what do you think are the most important things to know about this case? The most important things, at least at this juncture, to know about this case um, is essentially uh, the, one of the main things that the Missouri State Highway Patrol has laid out um, so far in evidence, and that is uh, some of the motive in the case. Uh, the, it was mentioned there in the report previously that there seemed to be, uh, from Lindley Rennick's side, uh, some, some issues with money, uh, issues with her spa that she owned in Columbia losing money. Uh, there are a number of court cases public, uh, publicly available in which there were many unpaid bills uh, from contractor work that was done on that spa, as well as some unpaid credit card bills as well. Thousands of dollars when um, individually uh, all add up to a lot of money that seemed to be owed. And also, on the other hand, to see that Ben Rennick uh, was set to really uh, come into a windfall of money on his own. At the time, at least from what we understand with some of the estate closings following his death, is that it seemed that Ben was almost trying to get out of the reptile business, this business that he had become really um, a luminary in, a very popular person, very well-liked by people uh, in the reptile breeding industry, uh, that he was really set to get out and set to become a millionaire through it. He was set to sell off uh, his ball pythons and his anacondas to an NHL goalie for uh, $1.2 million. He had already received the first installment of that payment in, uh, in February of 2017, 
and later in June of 2017 is when he was killed there in his farm in Montgomery County. So it's under, it's important, I think, at this point to understand the motive going on here, some, some struggle, some financial struggles that are laid out. On the other hand, I will say that right now, what is being laid out in the criminal proceedings in court is, so what exactly is the evidence saying that she did this? Well, it's this testimony of this one person, B.B., who, as that report said, sort of broke this case open. And I, that's really a great way to put it. It's based on that interview that the Highway Patrol did with B.B., an ex-lover of Lindley's, that provided them a lot of the evidence that they're basing their probable cause on to go with this. Now, of course, this witness, at least in Lindley's criminal proceedings so far, has been repeatedly attacked by her defense team. The, his credibility has been incredibly, has come into question a lot. He also faces a criminal case himself for violating a protection order that Lindley took out against him uh, in the years following Ben's death. So these two things, I think it's important at this juncture in the case to understand. Wow. I have a follow-up question for you, please, Lucas. Is B.B. the same person as Michael Humphrey, Lindley's ex-boyfriend? I understand that Michael Humphrey is also facing some charges in connection with this case as well. So I'm wondering, was that link ever confirmed? Um, you are you are right. There is uh, those are two different people, though. I will know. Okay. BB is um, uh, BB is a an ex lover of hers. They have a child in common, Lindley, and uh, and this individual does. Michael Humphrey, though, is a co defendant, and that is a great point, Julie, to bring up. There is a co defendant in that case as well. Michael Humphrey is considered a an, an ex of Lindley's from maybe more than a decade ago. Uh, he um, is a, was known to Lindley. They had known each other. Uh, they had known each other for some years. Uh, from from some of what I have heard from people uh, that, that knew Michael is that these two actually had not been in communication very much at all in those uh, ten years, though uh, after that they were after they were together. So it is a different person. The way the Highway Patrol tells the story that leads to these charges is that it was Michael and Lindley. Uh, that went to that farm in Montgomery County where Ben was, uh, where Ben's property is, and the reptile farm that was there. Um, that those two went together um, and and committed the murder there. Now Michael Humphrey as well has his own team on his side. That's a, another criminal case that's going right now. Uh, they all uh, his team has also said that uh, he is innocent of the charge that he's uh, that he didn't commit any that he did not commit murder. And it's going to be a point of, um, it's certainly going to be a point of contention is, um, is the cooperation maybe that either one is providing investigators or no cooperation at all from either one. Appreciate you explaining all that, Lucas. This, this case is sure. really quite fascinating and a lot of details to unpack with it. Uh, one more detail before we let you go, please. I understand that Lindley Rennick is actually out on bond awaiting trial, which is certainly unusual when you have a homicide case. What can you share with us about her bond and the way it's been structured? Julie, this was a, a big point of contention in late September in Lindley's case, is her release on recognizance from jail. Now, what that essentially means, uh, in this particular instance, what that means is that, yes, she was facing a million-dollar cash-only bond uh, in order to get out. However, her attorney, uh, uh, Tim Hesseman, successfully argued that, look, my client doesn't have any money. He's a public, uh, Tim Hesseman is a public defender, essentially claiming she doesn't have the money to, to pay this and essentially made promises to the court that she's not a danger to society, which is a, a major element in determining bond, whether or not uh, the judge believes someone is a danger to, to the community if they were to be let out, uh, said she's not a danger to the community. She'll be placed under GPS monitoring that's supposed to ping every 15 minutes, 24-hour surveillance every 15 minutes, and essentially also claiming, look, many of the state's witnesses in this case face their own charges or their own scrutiny, and they've been let out of jail. This BB that we're talking about, remember that charge that violating a protection order? Well, he was let out on bond. As, he was let out on bond albeit different prosecutor, different judge handling it, but was let out. And another witness in the case, someone that worked at the spa with Lindley, who investigators questioned very, very closely in the months, in the, the weeks and months after Ben's murder, 
also doesn't face any charges either. So based on that, yes, Lindley is currently out on bond under 24-hour surveillance, though. So again, Michael Humphrey is next. He's also been asking for reconsideration of his bond. Oh, we'll see what happens with his case. Lucas Geisler, thank you so much for all that information tonight. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up next here on Court TV Live, some very intense moments to show.